A campaign in Colorado that is trying to enshrine abortion rights into the state's constitution has gathered enough signatures to put that issue on the ballot this November. This comes amid an ongoing push to put abortion on the ballot at the state level around the country, including in Arizona, where the state Supreme Court ruled that a Civil War era law banning abortion could be enforced. Leslie Sanchez and Joel Payne join us now with more on this. Leslie is a CBS News political analyst who served in a George W. Bush administration. Joel is a CBS News political contributor, Democratic strategist, and chief communications officer for Move On. Uh, Joel, let me begin with you. Uh, as you know, Vice President Harris is in Arizona campaigning today. Um, it's interesting to me that for years and years and years and years, Republicans uh, campaign on abortion rights. Mm -hmm. uh, they campaign on overturning Roe versus Wade. Uh, and now that has come to pass. And when you see where states ultimately can take the repeal of this landmark decision, you see some Republicans, Joel, saying, wait a second. Didn't expect it to be uh, like this because they see the writing on the wall, which is that the country is not in step with what we're seeing in Arizona. So, well, they're not exactly saying, wait a second, I didn't expect to see it like this. Their messaging might be a touch different. Yeah, so you know explain, I mean? break that down. I mean, what we, what we heard from Donald Trump, and it, there's another question about Carrie Lake, so we'll just throw it out there. What Carrie Lake is, I think, a really good example who had called this, you know, civil. Uh, war era ban a great law and now right. she's sort of flip-flopping right. on that That's what a I'm... little bit take not necessarily taking the lead uh, but a little bit following Donald Trump who came out and made this statement everyone's waiting to hear what his position was on abortion and ultimately what the statement was was that I, we should leave it in the state uh -huh. the states to decide right. um, and, and then when the states and, and did anyone decide who wants to make a precious little baby should should be allowed to do so as he said but but what he didn't say was I would endorse or pursue a federal ban or a federal 15 week ban. He did not Which say his opponents that. believe he will pursue once he's president. But yeah. for now, Joel, he okay. has to say, leave it to the states. But even when the states decide, he says that he thinks they may have gone too far. Yeah, and imagine uh, how voters are receiving the conversation that you both had to go through just to explain what's going on. Right. And I think, <laughs> I think that's kind of the subtext here. Um, this is, by the way, where someone like myself or Leslie will insert the dog caught the car because it did. Mm -hmm. Republicans never had a plan for what they would do after there was a seismic change in the national abortion standard, mm -hmm. Roe v. Wade. And they are currently um, dealing with the mess that they created. Um, they pushed too far on this. Um, they pushed far beyond what any um, uh, large swath of the American people wanted to do on abortion. The American folks have been pretty clear that they believe that Roe um, or something close to Roe should be the standard. And uh, the fact that Republicans um, have spent the last two years uh, continuing to agitate for an even more extreme uh, restriction on abortion, I think will harm them. It harm them in 2022. It will harm them politically again in uh, 2024. And no matter how much Donald Trump tries to push away from responsibility, um, I think that you're going to see folks like the Biden campaign, outside groups that are supportive of Joe Biden's reelection, make it clear to voters and put it in front of them that Donald Trump is responsible. And no matter what he says right now, if he is the president, he will sign a national abortion ban, period. In the story. So, 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 Trump will so, sign it. so, Leslie, obviously, keeping abortion top of mind uh, is advantageous to the Democrats as we head towards November. But I'm sort of curious, this what I'm flip flopping might be too strong of a word, but this like dancing around the abortion issue that you were seeing Republicans do. Does that even matter to Republican voters? Because mm. I was thinking, well, who are they going to vote for if they don't vote for Donald Trump? I mean, were they going to vote for Biden anyways? Maybe we're kind of being critical, but maybe it doesn't matter. <laughs> I think all of this matters, Anne-Marie. You know, I like to, to, re to remember that good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad judgment. And that's what I think you have. And I think Joel really hit that on the head when he's talking about, did Republicans have a national conversation and a national agreement on where they were on this issue? And I would even argue that Nikki Haley raised that issue, uh, that there was not a an empathetic, comprehensive, modern way to talk about abortion rights and still protect um, you know, the right to life and balance those two out. And this kind of weaving back and forth is exactly, 
uh, the position Republicans are in now. And, and and there's nothing women love more than hearing a lot of men talk about their reproductive rights. Mm. Can I just say that mm -hmm. right there? That's part of the hand-wringing. And, and I've been out in the field talking to a lot of women. And, and while this may not be the issue they vote, they vote on, it really <laughs> makes their blood boil that they cannot be a bigger part of the conversation. So what are they doing? They are putting amendments on the state ballots, like in red states, Republican states like Kansas and Ohio, to kind of co to, to codify the ability to have an abortion. And that's beyond what the pro-life community thought would happen. So in private conversations, all in here, private conversations with pro-life community will say, we can see that this overreached. And a result, as a result, you're seeing more women run uh, on the Democratic side in districts that Republicans should consider safe and are making this an issue where they have to spend money and time because there is not has not been a consensus on the Republican side. So I'm curious, do you think this is going to have possibly more of an impact, not on the election in November, but even further down the road when we're talking about, you know, races for Congress? I think we have to back up and look at this holistically post 2022, look at the number of women who've decided to run for office. Look at the people that are starting to make this, all the the money that Joel's talking about uh, that's going into coffers specifically on this issue, single issue voters. Is it enough to really make it a national wave when we know economy, immigration, and other issues are top of mind for voters? No, but in those battleground areas is costing a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of confusion and a lot of stress, especially when you add in their IVF protections, which we see from our CBS, you know, uh, poll has 86 percent uh, public support. So there has to be attention to this sooner rather than later on the Republican side. But on the can flip I, side, I just add, yep, go ahead, yeah. Joel. I was just going to say, if you put that map back up yep. that you had up previously, look at those states where those uh, ballot initiatives are going to be potentially Montana, uh, Florida, um, mm. Missouri. Now, those are typically places where Republicans should do well. But we know that in Kansas, just what, a year and a half ago, um, that the voters in Kansas rejected extreme abortion measures and um, decided at the state level um, to, to push back on the anti-abortion movement there in Kansas. There's a potential that they could do that in Missouri. And that could harm someone like Josh Hawley, who's up for re-election, a Republican. It could harm Tim Sheehy, who's challenging John Tester in Montana. So the downstream impact that it's having on Republicans um, across the country is something not to miss here as well. All right. Uh, Leslie, Joel, always great talking to you guys. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Thank you.